Hello friend, Nathan here, and today we're gonna be doing something a little different. One of my students is working on my arrangement of ancient stones from the video game Skyrim, and he changed something about the arrangement and played it differently in a way that kind of surprised me, to be honest. So I thought, why don't we go back and do a reaction video to my old Ancient Stones music video, and I'll teach you some things along the way, and I'll show you how my student made my own <laughs> arrangement way better. All right, let's go ahead and jump in. I gotta say though, <laughs> First things first, full transparency, I'm going off script for this video, which oof, I'm a little nervous about because a little behind the scenes, I pretty much script word for word what I'm gonna say in most of my videos, except for you know a few things here and there, some jokes, whatever. Um, so to just kind of go off the cuff like this makes me uh, pretty nervous. So pray for me. Uh, we got some beautiful scenery here. So actually, let me go ahead and pause before we really get into this. For this video, I hired a video team. This was pretty early on in my channel, and so I didn't know the first thing about cinematography or anything like that. And uh, so I had a group of guys that were helping me out, and um, they brought this whole like, Oh my gosh, it was like a, a jib, I think is what it's called. It's basically a crane. Like, I feel like you would just see it on a legit movie set uh, that did these like sweeping motions with the camera. Uh, it was pretty legit. So uh, you'll be able to see some of those shots in here. Little lens flare, look at that fanciness. Right there, look at that. Hold on, we're gonna pause right there. That baby face, you see that? Oh, young, young Nathan. There's so much I have to tell you, and yet, tragically, I cannot. Gosh, I love this soundtrack. All right, so I wanna actually kind of have our first teaching point right here. I know I'm supposed to be reacting to this video and I'm pausing all the time, but <laughs> here we are. So. My biggest advice uh, that I give for new arrangers, right? If you wanna make your own classical or finger style guitar arrangements, um, I always share this, do not always default to the same key that the original piece is in. Some keys are just nasty on the guitar, right? And a lot of that revolves around the availability of open strings, right? So in this example, I believe Ancient Stones originally is in the key of G sharp minor. G sharp minor is really not a very good key for the guitar. You can already see from the beginning, I'm kind of having to start with these semi awkward chord shapes and a, a bar chord here, for example. So at the beginning of the arranging process, I always experiment putting that same theme, right? I figure out the melody, figure out the bass line, the accompaniment, the chord progression, and then I work on transposing that into different keys that I know work better for the guitar. I played around with some different options and ended up landing uh, in the key of A minor. So, Right off the bat, the piece starts with an A minor chord, so that gives me my open A bass note. And all of my open strings fit naturally within the key of A minor, so it's a great key for the guitar. Uh, then what I did is I slapped a capo up on the fifth fret, mainly just to bring that melody up to a higher range on the guitar, right? So I'm still physically playing what feels like an A minor chord in the key of A minor, but it's technically, I guess, D minor now. Um, but it brings the melody up to a higher range, so it's still closer to what you would hear in the original. Um, and then I ended up dropping down to drop D as well, which helped especially later on in the arrangement. All that to say, I highly recommend experimenting with transposing these themes that you're arranging into different keys. Now, if that's totally foreign to you, I've got a couple things that are gonna help. 
first and foremost, if you're interested in making arrangements at all and you don't really know where to begin or you've been kind of just doing it on your own and don't have any real guidance, I have a free training called Fretboard Freedom that teaches you how to find and play chords anywhere across the fretboard. So I've got that and then once you sign up for that in a few weeks, I'm gonna be hosting a free workshop called the Three Pillars of Arranging Workshop where I'm going to teach you everything you need to get started with arranging basically from ear training to music theory and fretboard knowledge. Okay, so when you sign up for the free training, Fretboard Freedom, which I'll also link down below, you'll be signed up to get a notification by email for this other free workshop. Again, this is all free, no gimmicks. It's my gift to you. All right, let's keep going. <laughs> it really annoys me that I left my tuner clipped onto the headstock there. <laughs> That's a really cool shot, actually. Let's go back to that. I've learned over my years of kind of doing YouTube, I really geek out about filmmaking and cinematography and stuff so they pushed way back and filmed I guess they kind of had some leaves a little bit of shrubbery in front of the lens uh, and is way out of focus and obviously I'm in focus but it just creates this really cool depth to the shot which also this was filmed in a tiny patch of woods you wouldn't necessarily be able to tell from here it kind of looks I'm in like I'm this you know wilderness um, but it was probably not much bigger than this room. <laughs> so they had to kind of do some, some uh, trickery to make it look like I was just out in the middle of the forest. You see that right there, that pull off. Let's go back. I wanna use this kind of as a teaching point because pull-offs sometimes are, are challenging, right? So if you're working on pull-offs in another piece, this can apply to you as well, right? So the reason this is so challenging is because first of all, we've got uh, a bass note that's a bit of a stretch here already, right? All the way from the low E to the high E. So we're having to hold those down while doing a pull-off. But what really makes it challenging is we're doing a fourth finger to third finger pull off, right? So our fourth finger is reaching two frets over, pulling off to our third. We don't really have a ton of independence between these two fingers. So if you're trying to do this along with me, you're probably feeling how it's really kind of challenging. So my big advice here, and just for pull offs in general, something people tend to neglect is we focus so much of our attention on the finger that we're pulling right? And we don't really think so much about the finger that we're pulling off to. And that's a mistake because you want to direct a lot of your attention to the finger that you're pulling off to and make sure that you're feeling a lot of weight there. Having that feeling really supported and secure makes it easier for me to reach out from there because I'm not feeling like that third finger wants to move with it, right? It's firmly planted. I'm really pulling back there. And then when I pull off toward it, the string isn't moving, right? Your finger gives before the string does. Your fourth finger can just pull through nice and easily and it gives us that snappy pull off sound that we want, right? So I would encourage you in your pull offs, think about the finger that you're pulling off to and make sure that it's really secure with some extra weight and pull from your arm. All right, let's keep rolling. Oh, uh, this part. Let's go back to that. Yeah, right there. So this, I fought for this section in this arrangement and you might even be thinking, what the heck, Nathan, I don't even know what you're talking about. So there's this middle line there in the original that's kind of like played with it sounds like a harpsichord or something but basically what's happening here is we've got three lines we've got the melody right and then we've got our kind of accompaniment 
that's doing these kind of like arpeggiating between these bass notes. Right? And then this middle line comes in. And that really stuck out to me in the original. The lesson here is that you want to really fight for these moments in your arrangements where there there's kind of it, it might seem like there's too much going on to try to fit on the guitar but this little extra line comes in that really sticks out um, those moments are so special if you can find a way to fit it all on the guitar because these are the moments that we've probably all experienced this, right? That, that make us fall in love with the classical guitar or with finger style guitar. Because these are the moments that if you close your eyes and you listen, you feel like there's no way that's just one guitar doing that. And I think my encouragement would be for you to not give up too soon, I think. I think we give up too soon. We, we find notes where you can initially play them and we don't really think outside the box, right? But there have been many arrangements of mine where if I just wrestle with it for a while and experiment with different fingerings and different ways to, to play the same thing, I often am able to find that there's a way to make it work. And it's those little moments in our arrangement that are just kind of special, I think. Maybe I'm just a nerd. <laughs> This piece of music is is a beautiful piece. I have really fond memories of Skyrim. Let's talk about this too. Playing our melodies in octaves is just a great way to make your arrangement sound more epic. And by octaves here, I mean if your melody is an A here, for example, I can play an A down below at the same time. And it just, it really fills out that melody and almost adds a sense of scale to it. It makes it sound bigger. So for this part, I was playing, I was playing some chords in there but the octave is built in when within the chord. Right, right here I went up to the octave. The octave right here, right? Or it can just be as simple as. Right, I'm just playing the octave with a bass note. But that was my idea in this section to, to build, to try to match the, the sense of grandeur in the original piece there, playing that melody in octaves. It's another tool to add to the old toolkit, right? <laughs> this shot makes me like have some vertigo, but that's what they did with the crane. For a second. <laughs> like right. Yeah, that looked like <laughs> it looked like for a second I was like, uh, uh, what's going on? All right, let's go back and listen to the section that my student just kind of blew, <laughs> blew my mind with here. It's a section that reoccurs throughout the piece, so I'm gonna kind of jump back to the beginning here. right here right there so the the beginning of the main melody so the backstory here is that my student Oliver he 
wasn't playing this piece with the capo at first, right? Admittedly, he told me it was because he was too lazy to go grab his capo, <laughs> uh, which I totally get, you know? Uh, so he wasn't playing it with the capo. And one of the kind of side benefits of using a capo is that it brings everything up, obviously, higher up the neck. And the higher up the neck you go, the narrower the frets become. So like this stretch right here. Without the capo, it's a little bit more challenging. So for that reason, he got really creative. And like we talked about, uh, the layout of the fretboard, you can play the same notes in different places. He took it upon himself to think, okay, well, this stretch is really difficult. Where else could I play these notes? And this is what he came up with. And then he played the rest of the melody uh, it, with this campanella effect that I've talked about in another video. I'll link that video down below as well, but it's one of my favorite effects on the guitar. Basically, it's taking a melody or a scale and playing those notes instead of in sequence on the same string, moving up like that or down, it's taking the same melody and splitting it across multiple strings. So instead of this, you got and to me that makes the world of difference for that melody there okay I'll, I just want to drive this home listen you can hear those notes ringing out together and it almost makes it sound like bells it, it sounds like it's got this like built-in reverb and I feel like it just so matches the kind of fantasy element of this piece of music. It comes back again um, a slight variation on the melody next time this comes back around I think it sounds even better then when he goes right So my point with this, when, when he showed me this in the lesson, I kind of just had to laugh because I like that way better than the way that I played it. And so the lesson here for you uh, is that be willing to experiment with different fingerings in different positions to play the same notes. We're so quick to just think, okay, I found the notes here. So that's where they are. But sometimes, and I've talked about this in previous videos, if you're willing to explore the fretboard and explore different possibilities for playing the same notes in different locations, sometimes you'll really surprise yourself and stumble across something like that, that it's just cool. So <laughs> a round of applause to my student, Oliver Wilder, for being more creative than me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I appreciate you, man. Great work. And uh, I might have to just uh, re-notate this arrangement to accommodate for your superior, uh, your superior fingering here. <laughs> All right. First time kind of for me going off script. First time trying to do one of these reaction style videos, but I wanted to use it as an opportunity to teach you a few things, exploring different keys for your arrangements, uh, thinking about these pull-offs and thinking about the finger that we're pulling off toward, using octaves in your melodies to uh, kind of add that epic factor, and exploring different fingerings, right? Playing the same thing in different locations like my student Oliver did uh, to really transform this section, in my opinion. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget, you can get my free training, Fretboard Freedom, and sign up for the free workshop that's going to be coming up the three pillars of arranging workshop in the next few weeks to learn about how to transpose and to learn about the ear training and fretboard knowledge skills that you need to be able to start making your own classical or fingerstyle guitar arrangements if you enjoyed the video hit the like button leave me a comment if i should do these again or never ever again <laughs> but as always my friend Here's to making the music you love and making it on your own terms. All right, see you in the next one.